How the fetal heart develops. Hearing or seeing a baby's heart beat for the first time is a very special experience. Here at Tiny Tickers, we want to share with you the amazing story of the development of the heart throughout each stage from conception to birth. Here is the embryo, around 18 days after conception. It is about the size of a raisin. We can see the head region and two tubes are visible that will form the embryo's heart. Around three days later, at around day 21, these primitive heart tubes have moved below the developing head region. By the next day, the tubes have fused together and moved to the area that will eventually be the chest cavity. It is also around this time that the heart begins to beat for the first time and can be seen on ultrasound as a little flicker. Over the next eight days, the tube starts bending into an S shape and to the right into a simple version of the heart with distinct chambers. By the time the embryo becomes a fetus, at two months, the heart is fully formed. It bears a close resemblance to what it will look like after the baby is born, but there are differences between how the fetal heart works and how the heart will work after birth. This is how the heart works in a newborn baby and throughout their life. Here is the right atrium, right ventricle, left atrium, and left ventricle. The two major blood vessels are the aorta and the pulmonary artery. Blood from the body enters the right atrium, then goes to the right ventricle. From the right ventricle, the blood is sent to the lungs, where it becomes oxygen-rich. Then the blood flows back to the heart, filling the left atrium, and from there into the left ventricle. The left ventricle pumps the oxygen-rich blood through the aorta, which carries it to the rest of the newborn's body. Now, let's look at the process in the fetal heart. You can see it has the same basic components as the newborn's heart, but there are a couple of important differences. All of the oxygen the fetus requires is being provided by the placenta, as babies in the womb do not use their lungs to breathe in air. Because of this, much of the fetus's blood is diverted away from the lungs through two openings or connections. These are called the foramen ovale, which connects the right and left atria, and the ductus arteriosus, which connects the aorta and the pulmonary artery. As blood enters the heart into the right atrium, some of the blood flows into the right ventricle in the same way as it will when the baby is born, but some blood also flows directly into the left atrium through the foramen ovale. This blood will pass directly into the left ventricle and be pumped out to the body without ever going to the lungs. In addition, some of the blood that entered the right ventricle and would in the newborn go to the lungs does not do so. As blood is being pumped out to the right ventricle towards the lungs through the pulmonary artery, some of that blood escapes into the aorta through the ductus arteriosus, bypassing the lungs as it does. These two important connections will remain open until the time of birth. Within 30 minutes after the baby takes its first breath, the majority of ductus arteriosus will completely close and the flap of the foramen ovale will shut off like a valve. This happens because of an increase in pressure on the left side of the heart and a decrease on the right side. These changes in the heart anatomy cause blood to flow to the lungs, which will then take over their job of supplying oxygen to the body throughout the person's life. We hope you have found this video informative. For more information about babies' hearts and our work helping babies with heart defects, please visit tinytickers.org, like us on Facebook or follow us on Twitter.